Thank you all for joining class and uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day you have given us, Lord. Lord, as we are going to learn from your word, Lord, your doctor, your doctrines, Lord, your theology, Lord, whatever the knowledge we are getting by your word, Lord, by the teacher, which the knowledge this teacher is pouring in our hearts, Lord, thank you for the, Lord, thank you for the pastor teacher, Lord, thank you for all the students we are, which are here, Lord, we are all are learning of your word, Lord, we need your wisdom, we need your understanding, and we need your fear, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Siddhi Okay, so, uh... Last week, um, we studied about uh, which doctrine? Which doctrine did we study about? The doctrine of man. Okay, thank you. Doctrine of man. Thank you, Anita. Uh, so, what did uh, some of the points that we uh, learned, or uh, um, you know, we saw in the doctrine of man? Anything that you all remember? God created man specifically in a personal way and God created man in his own image. Okay, God, uh, God created man special from the rest of his uh, creation. Uh, he created man in his image and likeness. Thank you. Anyone else? So what do we mean by image and likeness of God? Uh, that Jesus Christ represents God. Okay. But how are we as human beings, uh, you know, we are created in the image and likeness of God and what does that mean? What does that mean? Our moral standards. We, we represent God. Okay, we represent God. Okay. sense of morality, um, ability to relate to people, um, spiritual aspect, all are in the okay. of God. Uh, in our moral aspect, in our uh, intellectual aspect, uh, in, our relational, in our relational aspect, in our spiritual aspect, we are like God in a certain way. So what we mean that we are created in the image of God, uh, are we uh, having the same nature of God? Nature and attributes of God? No, we do not have a nature and attribute of God. Um, God is omnipresent. We are not omnipresent. And uh, so and so. Okay, yes, in certain uh, aspects like uh, being sovereign, uh, being eternal, uh, being omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and eternal, we are not like God, but uh, you know, we are uh, created in some aspects uh, to have the nature of God, like you know, God is, uh, you know, we, uh, we can love uh, others, uh, you know, we can be caring, compassionate. Uh, like God is caring and compassionate, but not to the extent that he is. But in certain aspects, uh, we are like God in his, uh, in his likeness, okay, in his nature. Uh, but not in, in terms of his attributes where, you know, uh, uh, he is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, sovereign, sovereign and eternal. Those are 
specific attributes or characteristic that define who God is. Okay, okay so um, we also saw that, uh, you know, God created us in his image and likeness means that God is holy and righteous. He created Adam and Eve to be holy and righteous. Uh, God is without sin. He created Adam and Eve to be without sin. Uh, God never dies. He created them never to die. And God gave uh, man a mind so that we can comprehend, understand, discern uh, what God is speaking to us. God gave us uh, a heart um, so that we can respond back in love to him and be, be faithful to him. And God gave us a will so that we can uh, choose. God also has a will, okay? We can choose whether to obey him or uh, no. So we then we saw the essential nature of man after that. And then we saw that even though God has created, um, uh, you know, male and female, uh, both of them are equally important and equally valuable uh, to God. And uh, hence, we need to give honor to both uh, man and woman equally because both of them are equal in the sight of uh, God. Okay. Today, we look at uh, chapter six, uh, sin, the fall, and salvation uh, by grace. Um, so what is sin? How do you define sin? According to you, what is sin? An act that separates us from uh, from the the presence of God. Okay, any act, uh, uh, wrongful act, that is separates us from the presence of God. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, go ahead, success. Uh, the work thing. To a lean to my own understanding of my lean to my own way is doing what God will be for me. What God said we should not do for being that is sin. And the sin has levels, but sin is sin. And the major the the, the most terrible thing is the sin of sin against one's flesh and the spirit of God. When God said, don't do this, you went around and did it, God automatically departs from you, which is sin against the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, successful. Uh, did I, I hope I got you right. I hope I heard you right. Uh, to saying sin is doing anything that God has commanded us or told us not to do. Is that right? That's what you said? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Just go ahead, Dr. To my to my level of my or understanding, sin is failure to do what God asks you to do. If God commands you to do something and you fail to do it, it's a sin. And if God asks you to not to do something and you do it, it's a sin. So when you go against the the word of God, it's a sin. Okay, thank you, sin. Uh, he says it's failure to not do what God has asked us to do, or uh, sin is uh, failure in doing, uh, you know, a falling short of uh, what God has commanded us. Okay, Sinatoli says in his failure on the part of mankind which separates him from God. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Sin is, is yeah, go ahead, John. I was saying sin is anything that separates us, our relationship with God. It could be an act, it could be an attitude. Okay. Sin is anything that separates uh, us from God. It could be an act or an attitude. Okay. 
Sin is actually, uh, you know, uh, falling short of the standard that God has set for us uh, in His laws, in His commandments, uh, in the holy standards that He has set for us. Um, you know, someone has said that sin is missing the mark, uh, basically going, uh, you know, going against or missing, uh, and not doing what God has set for us, or commanded us, or uh, what God has ordained for us in His laws. Uh, so sin here is, in your notes, it says sin is any failure to conform to the moral law of God. And it can be uh, not just in an act, it can also be an attitude or nature. Okay, so sin, uh, uh, you know, includes uh, when, you know, when we commit an act like uh, stealing or uh, lying or cheating, murder, uh, you know, or uh, we physically uh, you know, beat up somebody. Uh, all of those things are um, acts that we do and that uh, is sin against God. Sin is also an attitude, uh, an attitude like pride, hate, um, anger, bitterness, uh, jealousy, wrath that uh, we show forth. And it all is revealed in our actions. So sin is not just in our acts but also our attitudes, um, and sin is also in the very nature of man. What do we mean by sin is uh, uh, also the very nature of man? What do we understand by this? That our very basic nature is sinful. Yes, go ahead, Rebecca. I think uh, it starts from the fall. After the fall, this is how our nature changed to be sinful. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Rubina. Yes, so, uh, you know, when Adam and Eve, uh, when they were created, they were created without any sin, but when they became, uh, when they sinned, you know, their whole nature itself became sinful, and, you know, uh, and the generations after that born, uh, were born in uh, sin. Yes, success. Uh, thank you very much, man. When we're talking about the nature of a man, is what man loves to do. It's already in our system. That means there is only take God's mercy and discipline to be able to shift away from the sin. When we're talking about sin as the nature of a man, we were born with it. We are living with it. We eat with it. So it's already it's our, it's now it's our genotype of our, in our blood. It takes only God that that such thing can be with you. Thank you, man. Thank you, success. Yes, it's in our very core nature. It's in our genes. It's in our blood. Uh, uh, it's who we basically are. Uh, you know, whether we eat, sleep, talk, walk, uh, you know, uh, before we've uh, accepted Christ, you know, uh, we uh, we are the sinners. That's what Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, that God demonstrated his own love for us while we were yet sinners or while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. So we are born with a sinful nature and, uh, you know, uh, some of us do not agree to it, but... Uh, let me just uh, give you an illustration. Now, you know, uh, if you put um, uh, two small kids, say like uh, uh, two years old uh, in a room, and if both of them are uh, boys, and we just give them one uh, football or one, uh, you know, softball or whatever, uh, what will happen uh, in a couple of minutes? Or if you put two girls in, in a room and, uh, you know, uh, give them just one toy to play with, can be a doll or can be some, anything else, what will happen after a couple of weeks? See, they're two or three years old. What do you think will happen? Ma'am, maybe the boys will start playing together and the girls will be quarreling with each other. <laughs> Yes, the kid is so biased. <laughs> he says, okay, the boys will be playing together and the girls will be fighting. 
Okay, I think you missed the point what uh, we had we said in the last class. Okay, anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, so we find that both of them, you know, whether it's uh, the boys or the girls, both of them will be fighting for that one toy or that one uh, <laughs> ball. Okay. Uh, or you know, and one will end up crying, the other will not be wanting to share. Now, did their parents teach them to do that? Did the parents teach them to do that? No. No. Where did they learn it from? It's basically that they are born in their sinful nature. Like we don't have to teach our children to lie. Uh, or uh, to get angry. Uh, we have even small kids who get angry. Uh, small kids who throw tantrums, uh, you know, can be really stubborn. And where do they have get all this? It's, it's because it's we are born in sin. We have the nature of uh, sin. So let's read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. One of you can read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, please. Ephesians 2, 3. Among whom also we among whom also we all once conduct ourselves in the lust of the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we are by nature children of wrath, which uh, just as the others. Thank you, Sridhari. So all of us at one point of time, you know, we were gratifying the cravings of our flesh, like success said, you know, it's so much in our blood, in our genes, that you know we are uh, you know giving into our sinful nature, and that is what uh, I was also explaining in uh, Christology about the law of sin. So we have the law of sin. That means law of sin means you know uh, the rule or the domain, dominion of sin in our body. Sin reigns in our bodies, and because sin reigns in our bodies, the law of sin is not allowing us to you know, um, uh, uh, to do what is right or to follow God's law, to keep his commandments. So there's a there's a big struggle for the Israelites. They had the law of God and they had the law of sin. That means a rule. When you talk about law of sin or the law of spirit, it's basically talking about the rule or the dominion of, uh, uh, this, of sin or the rule or dominion of the Holy Spirit reigning in your body. So the law of sin, you know, which ruled and domi uh, dominates our book, uh, very being was not able to allow us to keep the commandments or the righteous uh, laws that God had uh, given us. And that is why uh, uh, Paul writes in Romans chapter 7, he says, uh, you know, uh, is the law uh, bad? Is the law not holy? Is the law not right? And he says, no, it's not that. The law is good. But it says, I, he says, I do what I don't want to do I uh, say what I don't want to say? Why? Because the, uh, my basic nature is so simple. Uh, the, the rule or dominion of sin in my body is reigning uh, in me and it does not allow me to do even the things that I know is right, that I want to do what is right, say what is right, but it does not allow me to do or say what is right because of uh, uh, the sinful nature, the law of sin that reigns in my uh, body and so here Ephesians chapter two verse three is saying that you know we all were following the desires and the thoughts uh, like the rest of the sinful people uh, in our cravings of our flesh in our sinful uh, nature and what did we deserve? We deserve wrath. But Romans chapter five verse eight says that God demonstrated His own love for us while we were still sinners. Uh, you know Christ died for us. Now the biblical uh, description uh, of sin is found in 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Can one of you read 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 please? One John chapter three verse four. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Thank you. So here it says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin is, you know, breaking the laws, not keeping the rules, not keeping the commandments, and so sin is lawlessness. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, and we know that sin originated uh, through the voluntary choice uh, of uh, Adam and Eve when they uh, you know, chose to go against what God had commanded them, what God had told them not to do. They chose to do what they wanted uh, to do, and they went against the will or the standard, or uh, uh, they broke you know, what God's command, they broke uh, uh, what God had asked them not to do, they, uh, they chose to disobey Him. Okay, so sin gives us a different answer to the question, what is true? Okay, so what do we understand by this? In, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, uh, we read that, uh, you know, God told them, uh, told Adam and Eve that they can eat from any tree in the garden, but they cannot eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And if they eat from it, what will happen? They will certainly die. Okay, so he uses this word, uh, you will certainly die. But in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, when, uh, you know, Satan is, uh, the serpent is tempting uh, Satan, uh, Eve, uh, what does um, uh, Eve say? Eve says, yes, God told us not to eat uh, from this tree. He's, he uh, told us not even to touch it and said, if we eat of it or we touch it, we will surely die. And what does uh, uh, Satan replied. Can one of you read uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, please? Genesis chapter 3, verses 4. You surely, you will not surely die. The serpent said to the woman. Thank you. So uh, if you look at it in the in NKJV version, it says that, you know, you will certainly not die. And it's using exactly the same words as uh, God said. God said, you will certainly die. And uh, you see how uh, Satan twists the truth and says, tells them that you will certainly not die. Okay. So sin gives a different answer to what is truth. Uh, Satan knows God's word very well. Uh, he knows what God has ordained, what God has spoken, uh, and he will twist the truth. And so it's in, so important for us to know the truth. And that's why Jesus said in John chapter 17, you will know the truth. Our word is the truth, and the truth will set you free. Okay? And why did he say that the truth will set you free? It's because Satan will come and, uh, you know, uh, uh, fill your mind or fill your life with, uh, the lies that are against the word of God, against the truth uh, in God's word. And hence, we need to know the truth, not just know the truth, but when he fills us with his lies or when he pops up the lies in our minds, it's so easy for us to give in to those lies, to accept those lies, but it's important for us at those times to speak the truth. Only when we speak the truth can we overcome those lies. A sin gives us a different answer to the question, what is right? Okay. Uh, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, uh, you know, uh, again, God said, we, you should not eat from that tree. To eat from it, you will surely die. If you read uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, it says there that, um, you know, uh, what Satan said, for God knows that when you eat from this tree, or you um, eat the fruit of this tree, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Okay, so we see that uh, gives a different question to what is right. Why does it uh, give a different answer to the question uh, what is right? Is because uh, was this the right thing that uh, Satan said? You know, if you eat from this tree, you will become like God, knowing good and evil. It's kind of twisting the truth because it's trying to twist their identity. Uh, Adam and Eve, uh, you know, they uh, were created already in the image and the likeness of God. And hence, they were like God in, uh, in, in, in certain aspects. And here, you know, um, uh, Satan was trying to give them a different um, uh, answer to the question what is right in the sense saying that, you know, you will become like God. God, you know, they will become like God when they were already like God in certain um, aspects. 
So we need to uh, you know, know uh, who we are in Christ. We need to know our identity. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the whole of scripture is filled with um, you know, who we, can, we are in Christ, basically, in the New Testament. Um, it gives us his identity about what God thinks about us, uh, even in the Old Testament, who he has created us to be. Uh, and uh, we see uh, where Christ has raised us up to be after we are born again, we are made new teachers as spirit man. And so it's so important for us to know our identity. If you do not know our identity, we'll continue to, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, live as slaves. We will continue to live with a fallen uh, identity, uh, uh, a servant-like attitude, a servant-like act, uh, identity compared to who we are now in Christ, that we are heirs of God, that we are sons and daughters, uh, that we are children of God, we belong to his family, uh, we are seated uh, with God in heavenly places, he has given us the authority uh, over uh, sin, over uh, Satan, uh, you know, he has given us the power uh, uh, to, uh, to manifest uh, his glory, he has uh, given us the sonship glory, uh, that we can do greater things than what he has done, so all of and we are made righteous in God's sight, uh, sin has no control over our bodies. So all of these identity uh, about who we are in Christ needs to be very much ingrained in our system, in our minds. And uh, when we live up to that identity, we will be able to fulfill the purpose of God uh, in a greater way, in a greater manner. And also we will be able to, uh, you know, show forth a manifest the glory of God to a greater extent, in a greater um, measure. Now, uh, you know, the reason why we uh, we are not able to uh, live up to the purposes of God or fulfill the purposes of God is because we constantly are oscillating between our fallen identity and, uh, you know, our God-given identity. Sometimes in some areas we live uh, with our God-given identity, but in most areas we continue to live with our fallen identity. You know, uh, I can't do this, I'm a failure, I fail in the past. I'm good for nothing. I can't speak. Uh, you know, um, I can't be like that person. I can't teach. I can't teach. I don't have the skill sets. Um, I don't have the wisdom. I don't have the knowledge. Uh, and so, all of those things are uh, are things that are of our fallen identity. But now we are in Christ. We know we can operate with the strength, the wisdom, uh, the, the creativity, the skills uh, that. Uh, God has given us um, uh, all rights and says that we are not competent uh, ministers, but God has made us competent, uh, not of the letter that kills, but of the spirit that gives life. Yes, we are not competent at one point of time, but now uh, God has made us competent ministers. That means we are competent to do anything uh, that God has called us to do, uh, not by the letter, nor by words, but uh, you know, by the Spirit, the Spirit of God will enable us, will teach us, will guide us and um, give us the skills that we need um, to fulfill the calling, the purpose that God has for our lives. Okay? Sin gives also a different answer to who uh, am I. Okay? We know that um, Adam and Eve were created in God's image and likeness. Uh, they were dependent on, their, uh, on the Creator God, but um, when they succumbed to uh, temptation to be like God, uh, it was very sad that you know they no longer even had the image and likeness of God. Uh, but you know now they were slaves of um, Satan, and they carried his image and uh, you know uh, uh, gave him to, and uh, that his nature became our nature, okay? his fallen nature, his carnal, fleshly, uh, evil uh, nature became our nature. Okay? I just like to uh, throw this question uh, or ask you all this question. You know, when God said that uh, uh, you will certainly die, okay, if you eat that uh, the fruit from that tree, and um, and Satan said you will not certainly die, and when he ate that fruit, and Adam ate that fruit, they did not die. So, was God uh, lying or did God make a mistake? No, ma'am. Okay, why do you say no? Ma'am, 
man because god cre- god created man in his own image and he loves he loves his creation and he will not lie to us okay okay so we know that uh, it's not god's nature to lie we already saw that in his nature god cannot lie he is going against his nature is contrary to his nature so yeah he did not lie then why did adam and eve die god said they will certainly die but why didn't they die Spiritually, they died, but uh, later, you know, like uh, uh, they died physically also. Yes, thank you, Zilatoli. So what God was uh, saying was, yes, it was a death that was a spiritual separation. Um, thank you. Uh, also, going back, uh, that God created a man in his image and likeness. God is spirit. He does not have a form or a shape. Uh, but of course, he reveals himself to us as a person, as a personality. So we can understand him, but God is basically spirit. And so when he created man in his image and likeness, they were, uh, you know, they had the spirit of God uh, in them. Uh, and their spirit was able to relate to God's spirit. Okay. And, and uh, of course, they when, uh, when they ate from that uh, the tree, uh, uh, the fruit of that tree, you know, they died spiritually. They were not no longer able to relate to God. Um, you know, but uh, and we see that when we are born again, a spirit man is uh, born again. Uh, but you know, our uh, physical bodies and our souls uh, have a need to, to be renewed daily, okay, uh, in the, uh, to be transformed and renewed in the likeness of God, in His image, uh, in His nature. And uh, we see that when we are born again, we are born again in a spirit man. And um, our spirit uh, is, uh, you know, our spirit to our spirit senses, we're able to relate uh, to God. We're able to hear Him, we're able to see Him, we're able to feel Him, we're able to uh, experience Him. And uh, we know that whatever we receive in our spirit man, uh, that goes to our soul, which is our processor, and it processes things and we act on it. So God was not lying there because He cannot lie. And he's talking about spiritual death. And of course, yes, uh, you know, one day all of us will die uh, physically as well. And that is the consequences of sin. So we look at what are the consequences of sin. Okay. The first thing is inward a spiritual death. Uh, when we're talking about inward spiritual death, it means that we no longer have the life and nature of uh, God. Uh, so when we're talking that we don't have the life and nature of God, it's basically meaning uh, to say that when God created Adam and Eve in his image and likeness, you know, he created them holy as he was holy. But now uh, when they sin, when they don't, no longer have the nature of God, they're no longer holy. God created them to be without sin. But after they sin, we see that sin reigned in their, uh, in, in their bodies. Uh, God created them, uh, you know, never to die. But we see that after they sin, uh, you know, uh, they we all die one day. Adam and Eve died as well. Uh, you know, God gave us a mind that we can uh, discern Him, we can understand Him. But uh, the Word of God says that uh, when we sin, our minds uh, have become foolish, dull, and darkened uh, because of uh, uh, sinful nature, and we're not able to comprehend, understand the things of God. Um, and that is why it's important that we, uh, you know, that we renew our minds so that our minds are able to perceive and understand uh, the things of God. What the, the spirit um, is, uh, a spirit man of spirit faculty is responding uh, uh, to able to, and our minds will be able to discern that and understand it. So it's very important for us to be transformed in the uh, in our minds. Um, and also we, we see that, you know, uh, man was no longer able to relate to God uh, as a friend talked to him. Uh, there was a separation that happened. Um, and we know that when we are born again, you know, that we have the access to go before the very throne of God to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. Uh, we also see that uh, when God created Adam and Eve in his image and likeness, he gave them a will uh, you know, to choose. Um, but when they sinned, we saw that their will 
uh, you know, gave in to their sinful uh, desires, sinful pleasures, the sinful nature. So our, our will is constantly wanting to fulfill uh, uh, the cravings of the flesh. And that is what Paul says, you know, we want to do what is right, but we cannot do what is right because of the law of sin that reigns in our um, body. So inward spiritual death, we no longer have the life and the nature of God, and that is why we say that when we uh, are born again, you know, uh, we have the life of God in us. Okay. Uh, can one of you please read if, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18, and someone else can read Romans chapter 5, verse 20, please? Ephesians 4.18 says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the light of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Okay, so here we see our understanding is darkened. We are alienated uh, from the life of God, from the very nature of God, uh, because of the ignorance that has come in, because of sin and uh, the blindness that covers our heart. We are not able to see, understand, even know or hear God. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Can one of you read that, please? Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin enter into the world, and death by sin, and so death pass upon all men, for that all have sinned. Yes, so we see that to one man, uh, Adam sinned reign in the world, sin entered the world, and also death came to sin, and uh, death spread to all because all of them have uh, sinned. Okay, uh, we'll look at the second point sin separates us um, from God. Uh, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2 says that, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Um, nor his ear heavy that uh, it cannot hear. And uh, so what is basically Isaiah saying is that, you know, God is not someone who cannot hear, he hears, but why is he, and he's not somebody who cannot save, he does save, but why is he not able to save you all or cannot hear uh, is because of sin that has separated us from uh, God, okay? Can one of you read Micah chapter 3 verse 4? Uh, it also talks about how sin separates us from God. So one of you please read Micah chapter 3 verse 4 and Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2. Micah chapter 3 verses 4. Then they will cry out to the Lord, but he will not answer them. At that time, he will hide his face from them because of the evil they have done. Thank you. See, uh, here it says that, you know, God will hide his face from them because of the evil that they have done. Hide his face basically means God, it, it separates, sin separates us from God. Isaiah chapter 59 was uh, 2, we already read that. Okay, uh, behold, the Lord's hand is not shot in, that he cannot save, nor is here heavy, that he cannot hear, and it's a sin that separates, and that is why sometimes we feel that uh, you know, we can't, uh, God is not answering us. Uh, you know, we can't hear him or he's, uh, you know, seems far away from us. Uh, it's because of some sin or some door in our lives that we've opened to sin. And, uh, you know, uh, it's a good time for us to go back to God and ask him and ask him for forgiveness of our sins, whatever we've done consciously, unconsciously, and shut every door that we've opened to sin. And uh, once we do that, we are restored in our relationship. Uh, you know, we can hear from God. Uh, we receive uh, a download of what he wants to tell us, what he wants to, uh, want, want, what he wants us to do, and how he wants us to act. Okay. Before we close, Siddhikino has a question, ma'am. Why there is so difference between the nature of Father and Jesus? Like when Adam and Eve ate that food, Father became angry, saying, "Jesus, the crucified Jesus." Okay, so uh, whenever we read things like this, that you know, uh, that, uh, uh, 
uh, you know, we see the anger of God or we see places that God you know, put upon them curses or put upon them disease or, uh, you know, he strike them. Uh, you know, we always need to interpret all of scripture uh, with the background of who God is, his basic nature. Now, his basic nature is, you know, God is loving, he's gracious, he's compassionate. We also saw that he's a God of justice. So when there is something that is wrong, God will, uh, you know, bring about his justice. He will act uh, on uh, his justice because he's a holy God. He cannot stand sin. Uh, and he's a just God. That is his basic nature. So when we see here, uh, God is not angry in the sense of, uh, uh, when we think about human anger in terms of retaliating, um, you know, but this is a righteous anger. Uh, righteous means a right anger because God is righteous. He is a God of justice. So when he brings out his punishment, uh, it is according to his righteousness, it's according to his justice. And it's not like human anger that retaliates. Okay, you did not do this. Uh, you know, you will be punished. You will not get this. Uh, I will show you who I am. Uh, you will suffer. You will have a hard time. No, that's not God because the basic core nature of who God is, uh, uh, you know, along with him being a just and a righteous God is also that he's a God of love. So all operate in the same way, okay? Uh, but for us, it does not. We can love sometimes. We, we, we hate sometimes. Uh, you know, our love is all based upon the works of people and our uh, anger is not... Uh, a righteous anger all the time, it's a retaliation, it's getting back, it's a jealousy, it's hate, it's pride, but it's not the same with God. So here when we see uh, any, any any time when we see God uh, anger or his wrath, it's all we need to understand it in his, uh, his righteousness and his justice. So righteous God and the just God, and when he sees a sin, he has to pronounce his uh, just judgment as a just judge and um, and uh, you know and uh, there is a punishment for it uh, but that's not coming out of his uh, you know anger that is in retaliation you know a righteous anger a redemptive anger you can say a redemptive anger uh, a redemptive anger that will redeem us uh, back so when we face the wrath of God, you know, it shows us that we miss the mark that we are facing God's wrath. It will lead us to uh, go back to him, ask him forgiveness for sins and get ourselves right with God. So God's anger is righteous and God's anger is also redemptive. Okay, I hope I answered that question. Sorry, I've taken... Uh, Excuse me, ma'am, your mic is mute. Okay, sorry, I um, uh, I just accidentally clicked the exit button. Uh, sorry for that. I hope I answered your question. Okay, thank you for the clarification you said. Okay. Uh, thank you all for joining class. Sorry, I took four minutes of the uh, extra time. Um, all the best for your test. And if you have any queries, please uh, put it on the stream page and I will help you. Uh, don't be worried. Uh, you can always um, uh, you know, reach out for help and I'll, uh, we'll do our best to help you. Okay. Have a good uh, day and I'll see you on Friday. Bye everyone.